Hey friends, it's Susie, and I'm here to talk about a strong teacher marriage. And let me go ahead and say, I'm not perfect on this, but what I found in my life is I'd rather hear from somebody who's actually real than someone who's perfect, because I feel like I can never be that. So my husband and I love each other, but I can tell you that teaching can really stress a marriage. And I have a tell it like it is husband, and 11 years of me being directly in the classroom provided lots of anecdotal evidence, shall I say, for how not to treat your husband while you're a teacher, but also the reasons why you might be stressed out and bringing that home when you teach. So I just want to share five tips that I have for making your marriage strong, even if you're a teacher. Stay tuned. As a 16-year public educator, I know what it's like to be in the trenches. I know the frustration, the overwhelm, the discouragement, and the hard work. I also know the successes. The mission of my blog is simple, to help you find your more. More time, more from technology, more student engagement, and more hope. You know that teacher voice that we all have when we're talking to our students and the teacher look that causes this lovely little wrinkle that I have? Well, if you're somebody who has any kind of strong classroom management at all, you are a master of the teacher look and the teacher voice. And here's the problem with that. You bring that home. I can tell you after sitting down and having dinner with my husband one day, I distinctly remember him saying, listen, I'm not a student in your classroom. <laughs> like I said, we're sassy. We match each other. It's really good. Um, but my husband got aggravated because I would bring home this teacher voice and this condescending attitude. He doesn't want to be bossed around. He doesn't want to talk down to, be talked down to. So my strong marriage tip number one is not to use the teacher voice or the look with your spouse. Don't you feel like to be a good teacher, like you have to be 24 hours, you're always grading, planning, or class dojoing, or remind 101-ing back and forth with your parents, you know, their Facebook friends, whatever you've got going on. It just is like 24-7. We've got to get a hold of that, friends, because if we don't set boundaries around our time, which is strong marriage tip number two, we're going to end up not having a marriage. I'm just going to be honest with that. So I want to give you some resources, and this is just a quick video from my heart. Um, somebody who really has blessed me with a lot of really practical ways on how to cut back different tasks that you feel like you have to do in your classroom is Angela Watson. If you're not listening to her podcast, it's totally free. It's called Truth for Teachers. She also has... Um, a website, I think it's the cornerstoneforteachers.com. You can go follow her there. But she's got really great resources. And a lot of that really, um, along with the stress that I was bringing home by always grading and planning and, you know, making videos for my students, you know, for a flipped classroom or whatever, a lot of that led me to host a conference last year called The Efficient Teacher. Actually, it was earlier. Yes, last year. It's 2019 now. So I want to recommend both of those as a resource. You don't want to neglect what you have because you won't have these moments forever. Even if, um, you know, my husband and I don't have children yet, and I always tell him, I'm like, honey, we don't need to waste this time just looking ahead to what's going to be because we're never going to get this back. So I want you to be the same way. If you want to have a strong teacher marriage, you want to make sure that you are not wasting the time that you have now. On the other hand, if you're a teacher, working outside of school is normal. We just have to find a way to constantly be cutting that down to kind of like to use this very cliched term at this point, to Marie Kondo, what you're doing with your outside time. You know, certainly not on your phone, on your TV all the time when you get home because you've been, you know, doing schoolwork and then you come home and you're doing something really unproductive. So do allow yourself some time to decompress. Like, for example, I'm obsessed with Instagram stories. I only am Instagram following people who I don't know. I love watching their stories. Um, but I watch those like while dinner is cooking. I give myself a certain amount of time and then I try to put that away. Not perfect at it. Again, not a perfect person. But if you want your marriage to be strong, you don't want to have all those distractions. So set some boundaries around your time. Preserve the time that you have together. It won't be there forever. And then tip number three is to talk and listen. Thankfully, my husband is a really good communicator. He told me one time when we were talking about some other marriages we knew of that had fallen apart, he's like, listen, Susie, you're going to know way before I leave if I'm upset enough to leave you. And I'm like, some people are like, oh, that sounds so harsh. But you know what? I'd rather know than, you know, just be in the dark and then all of a sudden wake up one day and my marriage is over. So communication is key. You've got to talk, but you've also got to listen. You want to, again, look up from that phone, look up from that TV, connect again, 
Go on dates, leave your phone in the car, find those times to really reconnect with one another because communication is, you know what it is. The lack of communication is the number one reason that people get divorced. So let's all just be insanely aware of that, especially because we have a job that is so demanding and so stressful. We want to make sure we preserve that nest that we have with our spouses at home. And also make sure to ask about their day. I know sometimes I had so many stories to tell, and my husband works with family, and he's like, I don't really want to talk about that. But don't forget to ask about their day. If they go somewhere, don't forget to ask about that, because you want to make sure that you are, you know, also nurturing the side of them that needs to share as well. Tell them if you're struggling, ask for prayer. I know that my husband is my greatest prayer warrior. He's the one that has to see me cry or be stressed out or whatever it is. So don't forget to ask for prayer because they're really going to be that rock, that strong place, hopefully, that you need to land on. Tip number four, but don't talk about everything. Y'all, a good spouse, which I have, will want to defend you. And y'all, my nose is just starting to run because I'm talking on this. So sorry to be gross. Um, but... A good spouse is going to want to defend you. Um, for example, and I won't get into all the details of this to protect the innocent and the not so innocent, um, but my last year teaching high school, I had a parent who um, approached me after school. It was a, I don't want to tell too many details, but put me in a really uncomfortable situation. There was nobody around me. I had to, you know, deal with a situation where he was basically screaming at me and, um, all of that happened, and I came home and told my husband. I will not quote what my preacher husband said um, in response. It wasn't really, I don't think, a cuss word, but some actions he wanted to take toward that father, especially because it was a dad. Um, so you've got to be really careful what you tell your spouse, and I don't mean hide anything, not at all. But what I mean is they are going to jump in emotionally and they are going to want to protect you. And I think sometimes, I don't know if you're like me, I'm not a very weak woman, but sometimes I can take advantage of those op opportunities where my husband is like wanting to jump in and defend me. And I can be, I can kind of milk it or be more emotional probably than I should be or even really am feeling. So what you need to do is talk about it. You need to find a fellow teacher friend. You need to find a counselor. Don't say, I'm not telling you to keep it inside, but I'm just saying know your audience. And if it's going to stress your marriage and stress your spouse out to hear the things that are going on at your work, tell them generic, get all the emotional crap is what I'll say, out with somebody who can really process it through you. You want to change the situation if you can or talk to someone who can change it. And guess who can definitely change it? The Lord. Y'all, I, I went through so many years, if you've heard my testimony, I went through so many years of being a completely stressed out teacher, even though I was working really hard, and I know I was a good teacher. Um, but I went through so many years of being stressed out, and if I had not had the Lord on my side, I don't know what I would have done. So just make sure that you are talking about it, but talking to the one who really can change things. If it's an administrator, yay. If you can change it, yay. But you know what? We serve a God who is big enough to change it all, even when we can't. And tip number five, friends, this one almost pains me to say, but it's move on if you have to. There's a scripture in the Bible and you're like, Sissy, that's supposed to be about technology. Well, I'm a Christian and that just, that should encompass everything I do, regardless of whether I'm talking about technology or Christian things. But here's the deal. Um, in my um, in my life, and I've, I just realized I have this tacky sticky note sitting there. There you go. Um, in my life, I spent 11 years actually teaching students. I taught eighth grade and up. And then also my student teaching was in eighth grade. I spent seven years in eighth grade and then four years mostly with freshmen, but also I taught some juniors and seniors um, in that time. And y'all, I cried so much. Not because I wasn't a good teacher, not because I wasn't working hard, not because I couldn't keep up, but the stresses, you know this, the stresses that are extra to teaching, just the teaching and learning part that you went to school for, all those extras can suck the life out of you. I remember calling my husband crying yet another time. And he's like, Susie, I don't care if we have to be homeless. I cannot watch you go back to that school anymore. And I don't know if I've said that publicly before. So if you watch this far, congratulations on that revelation. Um, he's like, we just, I cannot watch you do this anymore. And I thought to myself that day, I was walking around like near the dumpsters trying not to be heard. Isn't that classy? But I remember thinking to myself that day, Susie, if you were an abusive, if you were in an abusive marriage, you would have already left by now. You're in an abusive job situation and you're continuing to take it. And I guess kind of mentally letting myself off the hook for feeling like a failure. I felt like a failure that I could not have the joy and the peace and the whatever that other people seem to have. And I think it's because 
I would not lower my standards. I still help the kids meet the standards, but I would not lower my standards to make it easier on myself, which is probably something I should have done. So I, there's a scripture that says that you can gain the whole world and lose your soul. And that's a, a little different context, but it reminds me of this situation because I don't want you to gain all the success in the world at your job or all the stress in the world at your job. And meanwhile, you're losing your marriage and you're losing your life. I mean, if you're somebody who is... Um, is looking at your body and you're having, you know, symptoms, you're completely stressed. I know I went to get a massage one time. She's like, oh my gosh, Susie, I could spend like 90 minutes just on your back because it was so tense. Now when I go get one, honestly, because I've left the classroom, that's not there. Do you have a disease? I, my husband and I have struggled with infertility for years. Do you have, you know, I've seen many teachers with cancer, other diseases. Is there something that is showing you in your body this is not good for you? then don't be afraid. Now, I'm not telling you you should leave. If every good teacher leaves because it's hard, we will not have any teachers in the classroom. And there's already an insane turnover rate. But here's what I'm saying. And I'm saying this to myself too. Don't feel like a failure if you have to leave. God is going to bring you somewhere better and he will help you land on your feet if you put your trust in him and ask him to do what only he can do. So friends, again, I'm not perfect, but I will tell you that my marriage is still alive. My husband and I still love each other. And I think that these tips really will help you to make sure that your marriage, as far as it depends on you, stays strong. I also will say, I know I've had some friends whose teacher marriages have fallen apart and I'm not, no, 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 blaming them. But if you've got one that's still intact, I just hope that some of these tips will help you to make it the best it can be. Hey guys, I put my heart into these videos, so I hope you loved it. I hope you've loved all of them, but if you haven't, then make sure you go back and watch the previous videos. I'm making playlists for you all the time. So if you're somebody who wants time savers, there's a playlist for that. If you wanna gamify, playlist for that. And all of my themes of my blog. So did you like it? Go ahead and click the thumb below. If you really liked it, I'd love if you shared it on your favorite social media channel. I'm at Suzy Lolly on Twitter. And then finally, my very favorite is if you subscribe. Subscribe to YouTube and subscribe on the blog. Take care.